Because you seem so far away But now I'm coming home I'm coming back to you I can't wait for the morning sun I can't wait till the night is done to be with you To be in your arms again I can't wait for the morning sun I can't wait till the night is done to be with you To be in your arms again It's been so Get on my own But now I'm coming home I'm coming back to you Everybody, how are you doing? Here is Jada, Las Vegas, 2 p.m. I'm finally Jada Live again. I know you guys have been missing me. Yeah, we went from every day to actually last week only two days in the week and I know many of you were texting and writing everything everything okay yes I just had a busy busy week last week doing as you may know all these things for uh, this uh, music special that you can uh, uh, all enjoy it on Friday on YouTube I will tell you everything about it it's actually it's gonna be on PBS uh, if you are living in California but if you're not in California you can enjoy it, uh, the music special and the interview and the little things I have done during the week on uh, YouTube so JJ we show again later the Lido card how are you doing 5 p.m for you guys over there on the east coast like my guest my guest she's also in sunny florida today so i know that for you guys in italy it's almost time to go to sleep 
because it's 23 at night, quindi buonanotte a, a voi cari mamma e papà se mi state guardando, e in France also it's late at night, I see people appearing from Ireland and England, 22 p.m. over there guys, and good morning to all of you, I see Joyce over there appearing for Australia, it's either 5 in the morning or 7 in the morning, that's how early you guys woke up today to see me, so thank you for that, guys, you know, this is the sign for I love you and I really do love you, we do a lot of uh, signed language here for people that cannot hear, thanks to Diane Fiorentino, I haven't done it in a while, but we all know this means I love you or I love you, friends and family from all over the world, I'm beyond excited today because I'm going to introduce you if you don't know her already she's a living legend she is um, I never met her physically I just spoke with her testing the camera this morning and of course yesterday I started to dig into her life and I watch anything I could find on YouTube and there are gazillions of videos of this amazing lady I'm talking about Margaret Carey Margaret Carey you're like you don't know her name let me read here from my computer a little things I put together about this amazing person that you are going to adore. Men and girls are going to adore her. You will see in a second why. My guest today is Margaret Carey. She is a true Disney royalty. That's what they say on the Wikipedia about her. And a life in show business. Most people know Margaret as Walt Disney's reference model for, model for Tinker Bell. She told me there are two names, Tinker Bell, in the classic Peter Pan. But Margaret got her start in show business when she was only four years old in 1933 and has been active for over eight decades. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, she was a little rascal. We had a minute to too. I will tell Margaret, I cannot wait. She was on the Handy Griffith series, and we have heard her voice in over 600 cartoons. Yes, we did. As such, as she's one of the few remaining legends that can speak to what Hollywood was like during its glamorous golden era, as well as television when television first started. We talk every time about the whole glamour, and she's all glamour. She has worked with some of the greatest legends and stars that formed both Hollywood and television. Pictures think about, ladies and gentlemen, in your mind and you will see Margaret Carey. Like Tinkerbell, she has a big personality, but her size is small and she's super beautiful. And with her sprinkling of her magic pixie dust, she can make you fly. And I read in an interview that Margaret, well, she said something very beautiful. She said, you want to fly? Take yourself lightly. Uh, two things came out of Peter Pan. The name Wendy, I didn't know, and the little pixie Tinkerbell, our Margaret Carey. She gave life to Tinkerbell. I adore Tinkerbell ever since I was a little girl. In Italy, we call her Trilli, which is the sound of, of the, the sound she makes when she was flying around. She, uh, she could have been Italian for me. I'm going to ask, actually, Margaret, if she's ever been to Italy, because she was free-spirited, and uh, I kind of think she was ahead of her time. She was already then today's woman, a modern little feminine pixie living her life at the fullest. I adore that. Tinkerbell He said that she has been the pioneer, the pioneer of independent spirit and taking chance attitude for a new generation of leading lady of the Disney world, which is true. And so is our Margaret Carey. At 91 years old, you can turn the number and say 19, because that's how young she is in, in her spirit. She just married again, we are going to be talking about, an old flame, and she's keeping busy with interviews, conferences, and keep making goals and deadlines. She's just a force or na of nature. We are today in presence of something very special. I think she's special. I've never met her. Take, take in mind, she's a friend of Doug Hartling. I've never met her. I already adore her. And so will you. Let me play something before we introduce her. She's in sunny Florida. I play for you a clip of 1940 where she was acting and dancing and singing in a movie called If You Knew Susie where she sings and dances with Bobby Driscoll that later became the voice of Peter Pan in the Disney cartoon just to see a little bit of the amazing talent that this woman has. JJ play the clip. Look at their hay Lovers sitting on the stoop They're pitching woo hey Lucky girl, you got that stoop right here with you, hey. 
And I'm singing you my Brooklyn love song amazing of what I mean I'm beyond happy you know the saying beautiful inside out that's what she is mm -hmm. she's amazing mm -hmm. and she's with us today and I'm so happy mm -hmm. and honored let me see Margaret are you there my dear I am here I, every time I see that clip I think how did they talk me into jumping up on that table <laughs> I, I thank you for being with us. I had a question. I see the table is moving. What's that? It is. It is. But I have to tell you, there were clips on the front front legs of the table, so uh, <laughs> it okay. wouldn't slip. And maybe I, uh, maybe I shouldn't tell that. <laughs> then they think that I'm just so incredible. <laughs> but well, really, you are incredible. But I'm not incredible in this way. I am not as incredible as you are because I saw you this morning. I got you on uh, my computer and there you were singing. And I thought, what a beautiful voice. And I loved it. And there was guitars and all the rest. Do you know, Giada, I do not sing. No, you I didn't dance, sing? but I have never, that was a lady who was singing in my behalf. And I thought, she was 32 years old, this lady. Uh, you know how they mix in movies sometimes? I was supposed to be about uh, 14. And here I am <laughs> singing with this gorgeous voice and wishing I had it. And I... <laughs> you got but, me. I was like, my gosh, that voice. <laughs> I know. No, but the dancing was mine. Absolutely. And, and you know what, Margaret, though, it sells something because your lip syncing, which is not the easy thing to do, it's perfect. Well, we, we had a wonderful director. We had a wonderful crew. And um, Dick Humphreys was my partner. Yes. He went on to be an assistant uh, to a great dancer. And, um, <clears throat> and then Bobby Driscoll, of course, was in the movie. So I went on to work with him in Peter Pan. And it's just, it's sort of one thing after another. When you start in show business, uh, I was, as you mentioned before, I was four years old and I started in our gang comedies and then a movie called uh, Midsummer Night's Dream in which I played a fairy. A fairy. Which seems appropriate. And I have been working ever since and loving it. Can we start from the beginning? So you start at, started at four, which you're basically a child, and I find pictures of you in your beautiful book. You are still spectacular, but as a child, you were like a baby dream. JJ will show you pictures. How did you start? It Was your mother, father in show business? Well, um, I was born in 1929, and I caused the Depression. <laughs> so everything went downhill from there. And unfortunately, in our real family, uh, uh, we couldn't stay together any longer. And at 3.30, uh, when I was three and a half, I was adopted by these two older people. And my mother was just that wonderful, annoying Hollywood mother whom I adored. And she decided that I could make money this way. I could start a career this way. And she is the one 
who fought to get me in the movies. That's well. She she, she surely was right because I mean you were in something called uh, the Little Rascals. That by the way we have reruns in Italy too. It's called the Piccole Canaglie, and I watch it growing up. I adore that <laughs> season. <laughs> how how did you get into it? Uh, again, uh, there's a thing called central casting that they had then. They said, um, if you get into that, you would call up every day and find out whether there was any work for you. And when my mother did it religiously, and yes, I got called at the wonderful, wonderful Hal, Hal Roach Studios, and I was able to see how it was actually done. I mean, you hear about all of these things, and uh, as a little kid, you, you wander into this great, big, huge, dark building, And, there, and you had to whisper the whole time. And, you know, in case they were shooting or tape, uh, well, shooting then, yes. And, of course, the first time that I walked into it, they said, be quiet because they're shooting. And I was with a group of kids, and I know that we all thought that that meant that they were actually taking guns and shooting people. <laughs> we didn't know. And, of course, nobody explained it to you. But they were so wonderful to us. But they wanted kids to hire kids who were mm, four or five years old going on 32. <laughs> you had to have tremendous discipline. Yeah. Uh, you had to be quiet. You had to spend the whole day inside this great big place. Uh, it, it, um, it was not easy, but it was sort of exciting, too. <laughs> The ones that really had the trouble were the mothers. The mothers, uh, you know, they had to sit on the sidelines and they couldn't get near anything that was going on. And uh, I hope that these work. Yes, I think they do. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, and they would sit on hard benches all day long. Wow. Get up at six o'clock in the morning, get us ready, put on that horrible thing called grease paint which never worked. They touched us up at the studio. And uh, I mean, I was, I was dumbfounded. I was in fantasy land. Wow. And we went on from there to, I did about 37 major motion pictures, nothing ever big, you know, as a child. I doubled for Elizabeth Taylor in a couple of scenes in National Velvet. Uh, I did, I worked with wonderful people And always with my eyes wide open saying, what's going on here? Yeah. Uh, and I only found one person in all the time that I worked that I would say, I really hoped I would never meet him again. Oh. The rest of the people were absolutely dear. They couldn't have been nicer. And um, I'm, I'm so pleased that I've been in. I'm also pleased that I got out of movies and into television. Yeah, because that's what, uh, you were a pioneer in everything. As I said, you, you, I mean, we're going in a second to talk about Tinkerbell because, I mean, I adore Tinkerbell. Every boy, every girl, everybody love Tinkerbell. But before we go on that, I mean, you are an exceptional great dancer. I know you still dance. W when did you start dancing to become that good? I mean, as four. a little four, four years old. Four years old. And everybody danced, everybody danced. I somehow got to be the solo dancer. I was never put in with other people. I don't know whether I would have messed them up or not. I have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> I just kept going. And um, I was at, uh, uh, I got a call when I was working at 20th Century Fox yes. on a movie called I'll Get By. Of course, I had an agent by this time, my dear. It was about 18, 19, around in there. And um, the agent said, can you get off the set? Because I was an assistant dance director. I was helping um, June Haber. And they said, can you get off tomorrow? Because they are interviewing for a three and a half inch Sprite who doesn't talk. And I said, oh, you know, it's so hard to get away. And they said, it's for Disney. I said, I'll be there. <laughs> 6 a.m. in the morning if I have to. And that's how everybody felt. 
Disney's was a very special, special place. Oh, yes. So uh, that night, uh, I choreographed a scene of pantomime of a boy who was about 11 years old fixing his own breakfast. I had some music on a 45 record, you know, the ones with the big holes. And so I did it, and a little boy fixing breakfast and dropping eggs and making a mess. And I took my record player. And I went the next morning at Wonder of Wonders. The man at the gate at Disney Studio knew my name and had it on the clipboard. Wow. That was the first thing. That was exciting. And then I drove in and they told me where I could park my car. That was even more exciting. And then they told me where I could go to Mark Davis's office, who evidently I was interviewing with. And I got out of the car and immediately got lost. <laughs> and I'm looking around. I'm looking for a rehearsal studio, as you can imagine, right? And this big old man comes by with a big smile. I didn't know him. He said, you look lost. I said, I really, really am. And he said, well, who do you want? I said, Mark Davis. Oh, one of our nine old men, one of the great animators. And I said, really? I guess so. And he said, let me take you. And so he took me to this building and we went up to three flights of stairs, walked in, he says, that's his door. And I walked in and there was Mark Davis. Wow. And I looked around in his small office and up on the walls were these huge pieces of white paper on which was this adorable sprite. Just, I mean, she took your breath away. She was so adorable. And he said, oh, please sit down. Of course, I didn't want to, <clears throat> but you do what the man tells you to do, of course. He says, what's that? Pointing to my little player. And I said, well, I want to show you that I can do pantomime and the things that you need. So I brought this to do the music to. And so he said, Wait a minute. So he called someone who turned out to be an Uber director over the whole Jerry Geronimi, and they they couldn't get the player going. The reason I'm telling you this story is they couldn't get the player going. <laughs> Those two men worked for about five, six minutes figuring it out, and then one of them got to the floor and got a plug to put it in. Do you know you would never find that in any other studio in Hollywood, ever, ever. You wouldn't find anybody who would take you to somebody's office, ever. It was, Disney is special. Oh. So anyway, I did the, I did the, um, did you ever see the movie, Peter Pan? Of course, who have not seen Peter, of course, yes. Well, my, my new husband has not seen it. I'm, I'll tell you about that in a minute, I know. Oh so, but, gosh. I know. But anyway, uh, so there's a scene in the nursery when they first come. Yes. And Tinkerbell lands on a mirror on, dress, on the dresser, and she preems herself. So I figured that this fairy w was like a nine-year-old girl who had never seen a mirror before. So I did it right there in the office. Looked down, saw the mirror, and so on. <clears throat> and they said, I don't know whether they said it right then or called me a couple of days later and said, would it be convenient for you to come to work next Tuesday? And I said, yes, it would be convenient. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, you know, um, oh, the most interesting part to me is because we played Tinkerbell as this little nine-year-old imp, you know, and, and James M. Berry de described her as being so tiny that she could only hold one emotion at a time. Oh. Either she was very bad or oh, she was yes. very good. But what has happened as the years have gone by, people have said, oh, she's in love with Peter. Oh, she's in love with this. Oh, she, no, she was just this nine-year-old little imp. And uh, so I call her beguiling 
She, you love her, she's bad. You love her, she's very good. And I get to travel every place, all over, all the way to London and back, and all over the United States, and I'm going for another show coming up, to tell them about Tinkerbell. And she's the most adventurous little girl, and the fact is that she thinks happy thoughts. It's going to turn out all right. And she, look out, here I come. And when I tell people that, they say, yes, that's true. And they get the essence of Tinkerbell. And the essence of Tinkerbell, it's you. Because, I mean, I saw so many video of you, an interview of you, Margaret, yesterday. Mm -hmm. You are Tinkerbell. You are the positive th th thinking that you are saying. It's you. Well, what's so wonderful is that the first time, you know, we went on a big sound stage. And they had a complete crew there with a 35 millimeter camera, cameraman and so on, and all the lights and so on. And Mark Davis, who was the genius behind Tinkerbell, I mean, a genius. I'll tell you in a minute why he's such a genius. Um, he would have the pictures that he had sketched. And I, yeah. He said, we want her to do this or we want her to do that. And I said, certainly. So the first time I stepped out in front of the camera, I said, Mr. Davis, it tells you how long ago it was, Mr. Davis, do you want her to be ditzy like Betty Boop? Or do you want her to be above it all like queen of the fairies? He said, Margaret, we want her to be you. Aww. And I said, gosh, golly, I think I could do that. <laughs> So I was given really carte blanche when they told me what action that they wanted her to do. And that with the fact that I'm a dancer. If you go back and see the, the movie again, every movement that she yes. makes is a dancer. Her walk is a dancer and so on. So, <clears throat> but let me tell you why he was such a genius. Yes, May I? Yes, sure. I want to know. <laughs> well, James M. Barry only, as far as I know, wrote one description of Tinkerbell. Only one. Mm. And if I may say it from memory, it's in his book. It's very, very short. <clears throat> and I will do it with a British accent. Thank All right? you. Yes, All right. please. And this is the nursery scene. And the children have gone to sleep. And Mr. and Mrs. Darling have left for the party. And the little night lights are burning brightly, but suddenly in the room, there's another light flashing about so quickly. It's been in every pocket, in every closet in the room, looking for Peter Pan's shadow. But when it stops for a moment, you see, it is not a light. It is a fairy no bigger than your hand, still growing, it is a girl, Tinkerbell. And she is clothed in a, a lovely leaf that is cut low and square, which shows her figure to best advantage. <laughs> wow. And, to and that was it. That's it. And, Mark did. and he made it. Yeah, but you made it. You you gave him the, I think you, Margaret, gave him the magic of Tinkerbell. You are the magic of Tinkerbell. Well, I don't know. He had everything there for me to work with. I will tell you that much. <laughs> and he's the dearest man. And I must tell you, in those days, we worried about, particularly at Disney, any off-putting things that might happen. Uh, on the sound on the set, and of course you you realize that I was in a one-piece bathing suit. I think you can see behind me the cover of my book. Well, here maybe I can. I do have this. idea. Okay, uh, I'm in a one-piece bathing suit. They never gave me a costume because that did it. They wanted to see the outline of my body. Yeah. That that man would always watch that nothing was said on the set that would upset me or anything. I talked to Catherine um, Beaumont, who, who did Wendy and Mrs. Darling. Yeah. 
And I asked her, I said, did you ever feel uncomfortable? She said, no, I always felt so protected. That's what a beautiful. wonderful thing to be able to say. And that was that delightful gentleman. That's very beautiful. Talking of which, I mean, the figure of Tinkerbell, just like the, your figure. You started, by the way, you won a competition from Beth's Legs? <laughs> I even need to know that. What's that going wrong? Yes. Was that the first? I mean, must have been like innovative. You, you were like a woman uh, in 2000, of 2020 already in the 40s. Well, the, the funniest part about it was a friend of mine <clears throat> was going to college, and I didn't have many friends. I, I was working so much. But she wanted to go in the most beautiful legs contest. She was a tennis player. And I said, oh, oh. And she said, I don't want to go alone. Will you go with me? And I said, OK, OK. So we went to this little theater that is still on Hollywood Boulevard. It's gone through about six different names, but it's still there. It played the movies, and it had vaudeville. And we got into our bathing suits and we all marched out and they dropped this sheet down to our hips. So all you could see was our legs. And then the judges and they had this turn and all this <laughs> sort of thing. And, <laughs> and then we walked off. So when I walked... <laughs> When I walked off, I said, well, that's it. I'm not going to get my legs are shorter than everybody else's practically. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry, I have something that's coming up on my. Uh, on your screen? I can't see nothing. OK, OK, that's fine. <laughs> um, they, w they want to restart my Skype. I don't know. Oh, anyway, we're good. Um, we are good. So we're good, Margaret. We walk out and guess who won? Well, she never spoke to me again. Oh, no. <laughs> and it made headlines. But the pastors, the church ministers in, in all of Hollywood didn't want that to ever happen again. So I won the only best legs contest. <laughs> well, you must have had fantastic legs. I mean, you said you were the smallest, but hey, it's not the size that matter. It's the quality. I I don't, I don't know what they were looking for. I don't think they did either. <laughs> just, it was just something. It was so Hollywood. But, and talk, you are so Hollywood. You met Marilyn Monroe, and there has always been, I've read everywhere, for many years yeah. there was the dispute that Tinkerbell was inspired by Marilyn, but no, it yeah. was you. And Marilyn is just, she was wonderful. I worked with her that one day. And I got a picture of her in my brownie. That's the yes, picture. Yes, that's the picture. Her. And the other one is the one she took of me. And I just, she was just so adorable. But the problem was that Marilyn was under contract to 20th Century at the oh, time. Gosh. They were not about to loan her out to do something like a, a, an image uh, person. And secondly, at that point, she was not a dancer. And Tinkerbell really, really, really needs all the follow through with the arms and the movements and so on. So later on, she learned how to move her body. I thought Marilyn could do anything. Oh. She was just precious. Oh, okay. Yes, I still think she's such a great talent. So are you. I want to go to uh, recent years because during this COVID-19, actually just before COVID-19 started, you find you receive an email. My husband, my JJ, is from Amsterdam. And ah. so the, the guy that you met before. So uh, yeah. did you receive an email from Amsterdam from somebody I, that you had met 70 years earlier? It's like a Walt Disney fairy tale. Well, tell, tell us about it. I'm thinking when my book is going to be, my prince did come. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, there, I was in working hard, doing shows, and I just knew Good Lord said, you're moving out of California. I mean, I just sort of knew that. People would say, where? I said, I have no idea. When the door opens, we'll see. I hit my 90th birthday, and I was given beautiful parties and so on. It was <laughs> such so great. <clears throat> just about that time, I received an email from Amsterdam from this lady in behalf of a fellow named... Robert Boke, B-O-E-K-E. See? -E. And she wanted to know if I would like to uh, make correspondence with him again. 
well, I just, I just glowed because I remembered him with love and affection from 70 years ago. Wow. We dated while I was doing Tinkerbell and also ABC and my own show and so on. And we dated for, I guess, about six months. And he, he was working. He had graduated from USC. And he was working for, what's it was called, mobile oil then. Yes. And uh, so they transferred him, and I had to stay in California. My family was there, and so on and so forth. And it, uh, I was so young. I, was, uh, I knew nothing about the world. And, I mean, the fact that I actually went and sat in the, in the big auditorium at USC, I was dumbfounded. <laughs> I never did anything like that, where other people would think, they, to go to a sound stage, they would be dumbfounded. It was two different worlds. Well, he was the sweetest man. I just remembered him so. And I said, of course. It seems that. <laughs> this is how the good Lord works. Yes. It seems that he is a um, veteran from World War II. And he was in the Army. Yeah. And he had some incredible things happen with him in World War II. He had a whole battalion of German soldiers um, uh, give up to him. What's the word I want? Um, surrender to yeah. him. And he marched them to, <laughs> you know, he looked, he, he's 18 years old. And so they told, they said, yes, we want you to come and we're going to honor you. So he, with a, uh, some friends, uh, got this tour boat where everybody was on the boat was was going to uh, Utah Beach. Is that yes, right? Yes, yes. At Normandy yeah, Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the 75th anniversary. And the first place that they stopped was to fly into Amsterdam yeah. and then have two days there and pick up the ship. Well, they went walking down the street of Amsterdam and guess what? He looked over, at the, and I have a picture of him, <laughs> looking at this store that says Tinkerbell's Toys, just like that. And he said, did I ever tell you that I dated Tinkerbell? And they said, <laughs> no. He said, would you like to hear about it? And they said, yes. And he said, well, uh, and he told them, and the lady who was with them said, well, let's get in touch with her. He called me in from France wow. two days later, and we chatted, and I remembered everything. Yep, there we are. There, there we you are. are. I mean. Uh, and um, so we talked and talked, and I had so many shows that I had to do. Uh, I couldn't break loose of, uh, of getting. He was in. Hilton Head, South Carolina. I am in Glendale, California. That's a long way. Long back. way. <laughs> but I said to him, I did the Andy Griffith show. And almost for about eight, nine, ten years, I have been invited up to Mount Airy, which is Andy Griffith's birthplace. Okay. We change it into Mayberry. We have tribute artists. It's the third weekend of September. It's just great. We have thousands of people who come. And I said, is there any way that you could, I don't know, drive up from, from you said you're going to be visiting some people, North Carolina, and drive up? And he said, well, I have to have my 94th birthday first. <laughs> so I said, well, that seems logical. And a few days later, he got in his car and drove eight hours up to Mount Airy. To see you. And we looked at each other, and it was love at second sight. <laughs> I remembered him, which is not easy for me because I have a thing called face blindness. But I knew him. I just knew him. I could have picked him out. And so... Um, we, we, he started helping me with everything, everything. He had never seen anything like this before, but he helped me with the people. He helped me with the signing. He helped me with oh, wow. entertaining people. He just, 
<clears throat> and can I tell you a funny one? <laughs> so we're giggling and laughing with each other, and we still do. We still tease That's each so other beautiful. unmercifully. But uh, we're sitting there at breakfast the next morning before we start in with the with the, um, travel or the uh, show that we're doing. And he said, now listen to this. He said, I've got to sell my place and buy a house for us. Okay. He, said, wow. he said, where I live, there isn't enough happening for you. <laughs> he said, you need something. We have to, and I said, but he, then he said this. He said, I have to buy a house near Costco's because oh. I do my shopping at Costco's. <laughs> and as a joke, as a joke, I said to him, you shop at Costco's? And he said, yes. I said, you have a, a membership card? And he said, yes. And I said, can I use it? <laughs> and he said, yes. I said, will you marry me? And he said, well, we'll have to figure that all out. And I... And there you are, married. Yeah. When is going to be the first anniversary? Which day did you guys marry? Uh, we're on St. Valentine's Day in the oh. little brown church in the um, Studio City in the Valley. And, and uh, well, that's where Ronald Reagan and so many. Uh, and, and we had a wonderful uh, Disney studio to open its Beautiful. doors to us with all the people who came. And we went on a tour. And then the Disney and the club, and I, That's I so asked beautiful. everybody to look on the internet, the Disney Anna Club, dot org, and see whether there is a club near you. These people adore Disney. I get to travel to them. Beautiful. I just did a Dayton, Ohio, Disney show for them. Oh, it's it's just great fun to be able to talk with them. Oh, by the way. My website is Tinkerbell Talks. I have it. I have it here because you have this beautiful book that we show, guys. You have to get it. It's Tinkerbell Talks. And Tinkerbell. Uh, yeah, there's tinkerbelltalks.com. That's the website where you can, they can also stay in touch with you, right, Margaret, and know where and you are I going. Sign it. And I will sign it. Yeah. Be before we say we say goodbye, because time flies so fast with you, you mentioned before the things that you were born with, which is called face blindness. Can you tell oh, yeah. us in a second what that is? Yes. And about two years ago, a little over three years ago, I read an article that solved a mystery. I could walk right by my husband and not recognize him if I didn't know that he was going to be there. And there was a story about a lady who didn't recognize her children's faces yeah. ever. It's called, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Postopagnosia, but actually face blindness. And um, uh, Brad Pitt has it. Jane Goodall has it. The former governor of, of uh, Colorado has it. One in 50 people have wow. it. Look up in Wikipedia. We will. Look on face blindness, and you will find out that maybe... You have it. It's one in 50 people which will solve a mystery for you. You yeah. say, I'm not just lazy. I'm not just lazy. I never and heard of it. And yesterday I saw you did an interview. And also thank you for sharing also this part of, uh, of, of you. Margaret, you are a spectacular human being. I really do have one to wish this now. Listen lady talk about me. I love it. I love it. I she do have one wish now, though. Herself. My wish is, and you have to keep it up, I, I, my wish is that when COVID-19 is over, I want to come to Florida and hug you. I want to see oh, you. I, I want to hug Tinkerbell. It. I would love it. And you are such a doll to ask me on your show. Oh, and you are, you are mm. a splendid human being. We didn't talk, but I know that you, you just like me, are a woman of faith. God's, oh, yeah. God is the most precious things, and we possess yeah. our faith and God. So I know we share these things together. I, I might just say, and I don't say it easy, I adore you, Margaret. You're just <laughs> spectacular. And somebody yeah. was saying, did she say 90? No, 91. 91, ladies and gentlemen. This human being here is 91 years young. And I am blessed. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't have done. And then I have this wonderful husband. And I want you to give your husband a hug for me, will you? I will. Okay. I will. He's giving. Uh, he's say. He's, he's sending kisses and hugs to you. And give one hug to your Robert. 
I we know. are done with this. I... Thank you for being with us, Margaret. And I keep like up that. the good work, keep up everything you are. And I really, I cannot wait for the day that I can come and see you and argue for and real. we will keep connected now. Yes, we are still okay. connected. You're part of my circle of love now. Oh, God bless you. God and bless every... you. And, and thank you for being with us. Okay. Bye. Bye. Was she the most spectacular things you have ever seen on planet Earth? I mean, I know you guys are writing all these comments about I, I love you, Margaret. She's Doug is saying I love you, Margaret. Doug, you were right. She's really, she's a little fairy. She's like the most beautiful presence on earth. I really, you know, sometimes you wish somebody that could live 350 years old. That's Margaret. She should get 350 years old. God, please listen to us. So I'm so honored that she was with us. Please keep, guys, continue liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Somebody said my interviews are always great. Um, the interviews are not great. My guests are great, so it's easy to talk to them. Uh, please, uh, I remind you also later, take this book. It's, it's a beautiful book. There are tons of pictures. I spent, actually, uh, uh, Doug, uh, Doug uh, gave it to me. So thank you, Doug. This is such a precious gift. When I'm going to see Margaret, I'm going to ask her to sign it for me. She's really Tinkerbell. So if you're watching, and I see a lot of you are watching, and new people, I am Giada Valentia in Las Vegas, but of course, I'm born and raised in Venice, Italy. I forgot to ask Margaret if she's been to Venice. I will ask her next time, because I'm going to have her next time. Oh, why not? There is always a next time. God willing. So um, thank you, Doug, for introducing me to Margaret Carey. And thank you, all of you, for being there. I see also Dreama, Dreama Denver. She was my guest last week. Thanks to Doug, too. I love you, Dreama. So my circle of love is getting so beautiful, with, filled with so many amazing people. If you haven't, uh, if you have missed the beginning of this interview and you want to catch it up, or if you missed the interview with Dreama and all the guests that I had, more than 100 episodes daily with you, you can always go on jada.live. So Jada, G-I-A-D-A -A dot life. And you can get to see all the episodes should you have uh, missed any episode. You know, I sing, I cook, and I do interview of the most amazing uh, group of people in this world. So thank you, Doug, for uh, introducing me to fantastic Margaret Carey. I call, I'm going to call her Tinkerbell, Miss Bell, like she said. Um, of course, we are talking about Doug, and Doug will always give us, of course, the birthday and events of the day. Since I keep changing my day, so Doug and I, we had, uh, and you know, I'm not daily, so we decided to do like a, a little bit of yesterday, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, birthday and events. So very quickly, very fast, JJ, be fast with a picture. So yesterday, Monday, July 6th, thanks to Doug Hartlane, in 1970, no, in 1785, USA unanimously resolved the name of the United States currency to be the dollar and they adopt a decimal system. That what JJ is showing is that we all know George Washington in a dollar bill, but it actually is his wife, which we didn't know. There was also a woman in a dollar bill. Thank you for that. In 1942 in history, yesterday, on this day, Anna Frank, you know we love Anna Frank, and her family uh, went into hiding in the Hafter House in um, uh, Amsterdam. That's the entrance of the museum. And of course, behind there, I lived in Amsterdam, is the Hanna Frank House. And I keep saying, go and visit when we can travel again. And in 1957, yesterday, John Lennon at age 16 and Paul McCartney at age 15, they meet for the first time as Lennon Rock Group Quarrymen perform at a church dinner. Look at them, how young they were. Incidentally, the Beatles film A Hard Day's Night premiere also in London on this day in 1964, two Beatles Day in history. So yesterday, birthday, I only mentioned one because I met him once and I like him. In 1946, Sylvester Stallone, Italian like me, famous for Rocky and Rumble, was born in New York City and turned 74 years old. I met him actually when I was living in Los Angeles. Every uh, once a month they have a Cafe Roma. They have like a reunion of superheroes, actors. So you see uh, you see him, uh, Schwarzenegger, all these actors, you know, with, uh, what is the name of the other guy? All the muscle boy. And they have lunch there. So when you walked in, you see on the middle table, he looks like an action uh, movie uh, scenes. It's fantastic. So happy birthday. Thursday, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Today in history, in 2007, the seven wonders of the modern world were announced. Uh, it was an official declaration of the new seven wonders of the modern world. Uh, here they are. One is the greatest world of China, is the largest uh, man-made monument ever to, uh, that can be seen even from the moon. 
The second is the Petra Jordan. The Petra on the edge of the desert was a glittering capital of the Nabatine Empire of the Kings of Raiders IV. Look at that. It's just been discovered a few years back. And the third one is the Christ Redimir in Rio de Janeiro. I love one. It's a statue of Jesus that stands for 38 meters tall atop of the Corcovado mountain overlooking Rio de Janeiro. For me, it's really a most, one of the most beautiful things ever. And number four is Machu Picchu, Peru is the ancient Inca city built in the Incan Emperor Pacha, Pachacutec halfway to the Andes Plateau. Look at that. That was civilization by them. The number five is the pyramid at the Chiquizen Itzca in Mexico. The most famous is the Mayan Temple City and served as a political and economic center. Then number six, we go to my country, Italy, is the Roman Colosseum. Thank God they didn't took it out. There he is, the famous Colosseum in Rome, was the center of the uh, Roman Empire. Number seven, and last one, is the Taj Mahal in India, is the museum that we know is the, uh, that was built uh, by the Muslim Mughal Emperor in honor of his wife. That's a beautiful gift for a woman. And today also in history, in 1930, the construction began of the Hoover Dam, which is not far from where I live. And I'm always saying, next time when you come to um, Las Vegas, you have to go and see it. It's a wonder, really beautiful construction. And another personal event that Mike Ferrante wake me up this morning with this news. Today, four years ago, he reminded me that I left New York City after 11 years to move to the West Coast. There's a pictures of me emptying my apartment and the pots that took all my furniture to Los Angeles. Of course, I lived two years in Los Angeles and then last year I moved here to Las Vegas and Mike was my ride. He came to pick us up and he drove us to the airport. Thank you, Mike, for reminding me that. So birthday today, there is one in 1901, very famous Italian actor and director Vittorio De Sica, fantastic Italian, was born in Sora, Lazio. Look how handsome he was. And uh, four of his films uh, directed as a director won an Academy Academy uh, uh, Award, of course. And he also did a movie with Sophia Loren, which we all love. And another birthday today, Ringo Starr was born in 1940. He was the drummer of the Beatles, of course, and was born in Liverpool, England, and turned 80 years old. I know Richard Hunger is watching from Liverpool, so happy birthday to uh, one of yours, Ringo Starr. Tomorrow, we do also two very quickly of tomorrow, July 8, the United States in, in 1796 issues the first passport. Look about it, that's the paper. And in 1905, part of Angel Island in San Francisco is allocated for immigration, becoming the Ellis Island of the West. Different from New York, most of the immigrants were Asian, Australians, Canadians, Mexican, and those from Central and South America. Birthday tomorrow, only uh, one, so, uh, actually two. John uh, Pemen Pemberton is an American pharmacist who was the inventor of Coca-Cola. Was born uh, tomorrow in Knoxville, Georgia. Thanks to him, we uh, know that things go better with Coke. There we go. And in 1949, celebrity chef Wolfgang Puck, we have a restaurant also here in Las Vegas from Wolfgang, was born in, listen to this, Sankweit an der Glan in Carinthia in Austria. Of course, is German and JJ said thumbs up. He said I pronounce it well. And he moved to the United States when he was 24 and he turns today 71 years young. So where the events have burst in history. Thank you to Doug and me. We did a collaboration. I keep confusing Doug with the day. Talking of which, so I'm not going live every day. You see the hands come back. Diane, how do you say not every day? So I'm going to go uh, live. So today, then I will be live again on Friday. And then I'm going live on Saturday from the kitchen because Saturday I'm going to be a chef. So normally I am a singer. Did sign language for what I do. I am a singer. But Saturday... I'm going to be a chef. I'm going to be in the kitchen. I'm going to be cooking for you. I haven't decided what to cook for you. And of course, it's July and you're saying, where is the wine? Well, the wine has arrived. I showed you the other day. So starting on Friday, we will be talking about Italian wine that I'm actually be supported by the um, Bosco del Merlo, delicious wine. I got extra box yesterday. So I have a lot of wine. I wish my great was living next to me. I would have bring him and, and Robert wine every day to make them drunk, you know. And you, Doug, I know you love wine too. And Anybody that is come to my house is full of wine, and you know me, I don't drink that much. So, we are gonna gather together on Friday, all together, friends, 
and family of my circle of love. Guys, I do love you. My guest today was not amazing, was beyond amazing. I don't even know if you can say that. So thank you, Doug, for the introduction to Margaret Carey the real life Tinkerbell, she is magic. And I'm gonna be seeing you on Friday, same time, same place, so 2 p.m. for me here in Las Vegas. Giada Valenti, Venice, Italy, of course, born and raised there, but I'm a Vegas girl now, not a sugar, a singer. JJ, did I forgot to mention something? Yes, I did forgot to mention something, you see? By the way, I still cannot print, so I have to write everything. I wanna thank Jenny Dolin. Jenny Dolin, because last week, of course, uh, you saw, uh, not, not last week, actually this week, July, June, uh, July 5th was the birthday of Patricia Maggio and she booked me on Cameo to wish Patricia happy birthday and after that she also did a donation and by the way Jenny you don't know but I had just put that donation button on my website and two seconds later Lily two seconds later I see a donation I'm like what's that I thought it was the website giving money. No, it was, Je it was Jenny Darling. So thank you, Jenny, for supporting me during this COVID-19 pandemic. No work, nothing coming in moment beside your donation. So thank you, Jenny. I want to show you the famous cup, you know, that, that little Jada that uh, Neil Pornoy made. And who look who bought also that cup. That, that's, uh, uh, of course, that Sal. That's Sal, the husband of our Diane Fiorentino, and they bought the Dito Giada cup. So they're drinking coffee with me every day, by the way, with a real Nespresso machine. Guys, I'm coming to your house for coffee because that coffee machine makes delicious coffee and you're drinking in my cup. So thank you guys for your support. Who else? Ronnie Manicotti, I didn't have time to take pictures, but Ronnie sent me a big package. It's big like this, it's hanging on my living room starting tomorrow. It's a beautiful sign to put on the wall and I will show you tomorrow the picture. So thank you, Ronnie, for that. And what else? I'm going to be live on Friday, but Friday night, don't forget, everybody can watch on YouTube. So July the 10th at 8 p.m., sponsored by the Contemporary uh, Club of Redlands. You can see my From Venice with Love music special. You can watch it on YouTube and Facebook for free. I'm, I'm the opening act, actually, of the Redland Bowl Summer Music Festival. I wish I was there in the upper little Hollywood Bowl that they have near uh, San Bernardino. I can be there, so you can watch it on uh, YouTube. And yesterday I was part of the Jim Caruso Pyjama Cast Party. If you have missed it, I sang a beautiful song of Ennio Morricone that unfortunately passed away yesterday. So I sang Cinema Paradiso and was guest of Jim Caruso. So thank you, Jim, if you're watching. Thank you, uh, for having me you can go on Jim Caruso YouTube channel and you can watch that I think I talk enough for today guys I love you I love you all friends and family and I'm gonna be seeing you on Friday at 2 p.m. and I think I'm gonna drink a cup of coffee I love you guys see you tomorrow see you Friday not tomorrow anymore see you Friday same time same place ciao a presto yeah. Dear old Danke schön, thank you for seeing me again. Though I'm here in my solitude, I know you are there, and in my heart I smile again. And so I sing here in my solitude, waiting. See you same time, same place, and I can wait to say again. Danke schön, danke schön, danke schön, dear old Alfie de Sen. See you tomorrow. A domani.